welcome Hal Savar. I hope I said that right. Is that right? You got it. Solid. Excellent. Yeah. Usually I stumble on the first post, which is just getting the artist's name right, because you only see it written, and then they'll uh, they'll tell you and they'll correct me. But yeah, Hal Savar, brilliant. Uh, would you be able to give us a bit of background about yourself then? Yeah. Um, so I was uh, born in Philadelphia, and my parents got separated when I was you know, around eight years old, and my mom remarried a guy in the Air Force. So we started moving around like every three or four years. And um, around those times, once I got into high school, really like sometimes we'd move into a new spot and I'd be kind of lonely. Mm. And the thing that would make me feel sort of connected again to people was music. You know, I was like, find my people, my community. And uh, it was always something that I wanted to be able to do for other people that maybe would feel the same way. Yeah. And uh, we ended up moving from... And it was Northern Virginia to Ohio to Boston, Massachusetts, to Florida, back to Boston. Wow. And uh, eventually to Las Vegas. And that's where my stepdad retired out here in Las Vegas. And I've been here for like 20, 21 years. And now I have two kids, family of my own. And um, I've been basically... uh, I've basically been a human jukebox in Vegas <laughs> nice. for like 15, 16 years. And it's a That's good amazing. job to have. Yeah. You know, I love it. Like, uh, I just play requests, whatever people want to hear. I have a band. I play solo. Um, but I've also been writing my, my own music for a long time. And during the pandemic, uh, it was the first time I had a chance to sort of stop and take stock of everything going on in my life as a lot of people did. Um, And I realized that maybe I didn't pick up a guitar originally to sing Brown Eyed Girl and Don't Stop Believing every (laughs) night to to people who are drunk, you know? Like maybe I I picked up a guitar to create art that people would, you know, want to... That would make them feel better. That would speak to them in some way, you know. So uh, I made it my mission to sort of get back on the horse nice. <laughs> and do my own music. And so starting um, this year, I've basically been releasing a new single every six weeks and just chasing it, chasing it now for real, which is crazy because... <laughs> It's not the typical like story where you know you're you've got a guy in his early twenties in a van, you know, like yeah. chasing yeah. the music thing. I've got a family and like I'm doing it a little backwards, but it's okay. Yeah. I'm ready. I think you can you can start wherever you want to. Yeah. Like I I started doing this and making music when I had a kid. It kind of yeah. made me want to do it, which is strange because you'd think you'd do that do all the music stuff before that but um yeah i mean it's it's fuel you know it's like rocket fuel that's it it kind of uh want it forces you to want to do stuff and i noticed just looking at your discography you have an album from 2004 which is self-titled and then this big gap and then 2023 so i can kind of see where covid happened and where you you started doing stuff so the self-titled was that actually released in 2004 yeah so what's okay. funny is that um i so i taught myself how to play guitar and i started writing songs like almost immediately hmm. i didn't know any covers all i wanted to do was play my own songs and i'm right around that time you know i ended up moving to vegas yeah and i there was a guy who kind of was interested in managing me and sort of put this whole plan together and I recorded my first album which was all those songs I had written there's like nine songs I wrote them between the ages of like 17 and basically 17 and like 20 right those all the songs that I had written between the 17 <laughs> and 20 and then um we yeah we released that my first album and then there was kind of like a plan in place and then we went as far as we could with it and then it kind of all fell apart and then life just sort of like took over you know <laughs> so when did it become a point where it's like um i need to start doing covers and you know become that human jukebox when did that fall into place was, was that gradual or it was it was actually shortly after 
everything sort of fell apart. Mm. I I started to kind of like take some time to, to kind of assess like what I wanted to do. And I was in a situation where, I mean, you know, it's like I needed to make money. So I had kind of like a crummy day job I didn't like. Mm. And I still wanted to play music, but I didn't really know. Like there had always been somebody sort of steering the ship and it wasn't me right. and i had no idea what to do i was kind of flailing like oh i don't know like i could put music out there i could just keep playing open mic nights and i don't know i didn't know what to do yeah and um i had somebody in the music business who was really cool to me who gave me some good advice and he was kind of like look like why don't you play music for a living and then you'll get the experience of performing and making a song your own. Like there's nothing wrong with cover songs. And he was like, you know, and then, you know, you can continue to write music. And he was like, you'll be, you'll be happy and way ahead of like where you're at just playing songs at open mics once a week. Yeah. And I was kind of like, yeah, that, that sounds good. So, I, but I didn't want to, when at the time in Vegas, all of the cover musicians and bands were really similar and it was kind of like they would all wear the same color yeah. on stage and be like white night everybody would wear white <laughs> and then like <laughs> they'd be kind of dancing around and a lot of like tra they played at tracks and it was like a little too like i just didn't like it it was a little schlocky for me and i wanted something that like, seemed more like cool and like organic mm. and I, I i saw the dueling pianos at one of the casinos have you ever seen those dueling pianos before? No. So it's literally like two piano players who sit across from each other and people will be like, $20, play Don't Stop Believing. And then they'll start playing the song. And then the other guy will be like, I just got $40 here living on a prayer. And then they'll <laughs> stop and they'll go into living on a prayer. And they, they have this whole like thing that they do. And I was kind of like, oh, you could probably do this with acoustic guitars, you know? Mm. And then that just sort of transformed into this human jukebox experience thing where I knew like a million songs and I just kind of do them my way. Yeah. And sometimes I would mix stuff that shouldn't be mixed together and it made it fun for me. And it's still, it's fun, but um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a job, you know, I've been doing it for so long now that it feels yeah. like work. It's not an expression of you as an artist, your right. your stuff. Have you? Did, I mean, did you manage to tease in? Uh, do you manage to tease in some of your own songs during those yeah. jukebox sex? Definitely. So, like, basically, the way the show works is the I give the crowd a song menu that has like three hundred and fifty songs on it. Yeah, and uh, they write down whatever they want to hear on like post it notes, and then throw like money in the bucket, and I just do them in the order I get them. Yeah. And then in my own mind, I kind of go, okay, like I've done, you know, like five or six of the covers, like, let me throw in one of my songs. Yeah. And then I'll do like another, like five or six and then throw in one of mine. <laughs> I always start, I always end the shows with my stuff, you know? Nice. So at least it's the last thing people hear. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. Well, it must work a little bit because um, you've got, uh, quite a few monthly listeners. Um, this is just looking at Spotify, and Spotify is not my favorite ever. But yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you've got a decent amount of monthly yeah. listeners, which is really nice, and um, it's nice to see those those numbers going up. I guess. Um, so let's stop talking about the human jukebox stuff because I know yeah. that's not what you're here for. You want to move on, and that's great. Um, and let's talk about your singles then that you've been releasing. Uh, we could start with maybe Melt Away. That's your most recent Melt one. Away. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun one. Yeah, so I just, that's the most recent one mm. uh, that I just released. And I had uh, a friend of mine, she she said, hey, like, can you write something that me and my friends can dance to at your show? Because I up until then, I kind of was writing songs that were very like, I don't know. I mean, I, I think they're, they're, they're not dancey. They're like kind of deep, you know, singer songwriters type songs, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I was like, I'll give it a shot. And I started to listen to like a whole bunch of new music. And I kind of came to like some weird conclusions that like things are really similar and repetitive in pop music. Like there's this thing where you'll hear in songs, people tell you to like put your hands up and take shots. And I was like, <laughs> okay, 
I'm going to put that in the song, you know, almost as like a tongue in cheek, like, hey, it's like every other pop song, like, put your hands up, take shots, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I kind of thought that that, that kind of like Ed sheeran Sean Mendez type of like pop vibe was, I, I like it. I like the way it feels because it feels like something you could hear in a club, but also feels real and like organic. So I kind of knew where I wanted to start from with the song. Um, but I, in my mind, I was like, I wanted to be creative about it. So uh, the song in actuality is supposed to be from the perspective of like, if addiction could sing like a love song to you, right. <laughs> that's kind of where the song is coming from, yeah. you know, <laughs> and maybe nobody knows that except for me, which is fine. But, <laughs> you know, I thought it was kind of a funny way to. It's always nice to put something out there and people interpret it in their own way. Um, yeah. It's nice to have your own meaning to it as well. Right. Oh, that's nice. Um, do you feel it's dancey enough? Do you think it's the kind of thing that would get people moving? Have you tried it out already? And does it? I've road tested the song. Yeah. It's uh, people like it a lot. And there's a, there is like a lot of head bobbing and dancing and stuff. So nice. mission accomplished. I think. <laughs> so then we talk about um, maybe heaven next. Uh, kind of going back in time song by song here. yeah uh, is that heaven uh so i wanted to write a song about my i have a three-year-old son and i wanted to write a song about him kind of the idea was gonna be like oh now everything kind of feels like it's in place mm. but in the process of like trying to write that song i started to think kind of about like what kind of message i would want to I would want him to have forever. If he he's going to listen to this song forever and know that it was kind of for him. You know, what do I want to say? And I started Pretty to think sweet. about how I've been maybe for a long time, the type of person who was a little bit envious of like other people's successes. Hmm. Uh, and that's not a good way to live your life. Yeah. And yeah. I started to think about kind of like um, how I, I, I need to learn to appreciate the good stuff in my life. And that's what I want for my son. And also in doing that, part of that is like holding on to the people that you care about while they're here and that the people that love you and the people that you love kind of make you who you are. That's what's like, what's in your DNA. Yeah. So I wrote this song kind of like throwing all that stuff together into like a bowl. <laughs> and um, it's, you know, I wanted it to kind of, have this weird like ebb and flow kind of um almost like waves the song where it's kind of like gentle and then it gets like a little like harsh and then like gentle mm. again and harsh and then um i wanted the bridge to feel like a gospel like kind of church music you know because the, the song title. is spiritual <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah oh lovely that's that's really sweet and actually if we go back one more step to Violet's yeah. song. Um, yeah. Do we have a similar story there? <laughs> Violet's song, it was my, so it's, I wrote that song for my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Violet's nine now. I wrote that song, you know, about five years ago when she was yeah. like three or four. And um, yeah, Violet's song was just, it was my, I started writing song kind of thinking about like what it was like being a parent for the first time, which for me, it was, it felt like this time machine because it's like I was thinking about my past and my my future and the present, my parents and like all this stuff is wrapped into like your own kid, you know, yeah. and um, it's crazy. And I, I just when I was a little kid, I was this type of kid who was like running around, like pretending to be Superman, like dressed like Superman all the time. <laughs> and I realized that like the first time in my life that I ever actually felt like a superhero was with my daughter. It was like, for real. You I know? see that. I see that. Yeah. You know, like you're, that's, you're literally like, you're their whole world. Mm. You're there to like, keep them safe and take care of them. And they look at you like, wow, like, like you're the answer to everything. They look yeah. at you with that, like, you've got the answer to every, every problem I come to you with. Uh, it's, it's funny. Like, it, you say that when I had a kid, mine was the opposite. Mine was more like, 
panic <laughs> worry and mine was like I made music to do with that panic and worry uh, it yeah, sounds like you had your head in the right place at that time <laughs> there is there's a lot of that panic and worry too like I when I when I found out that we were having a baby my first thought was like is, does my dream have to die now like you know what I mean like I thought mm. is that it like do I need to get like a real job and like not be chasing this music thing um and then you know I realized like well that's stupid like and I'd, I'd be a much better parent and person if I'm doing what I love to do and I want to and that's part of what I'm doing now is like like really chasing it because I really want to be successful and mm -hmm. I want my kids to see that you can chase your dreams and accomplish them you know that it's 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 okay to like yeah. chase something you know even if somebody if you're an underdog it's totally okay i think there's way too much pressure in the music industry especially to become rich and famous with music but if yeah. you think about the percentage of artists that actually are rich and famous in the music industry and compared to those that aren't and there's nothing wrong with having a career in music where you don't end up being as successful as the Beatles because yeah you know, right but everyone you talk to and you say oh, I'm a musician and stuff and they're like oh you know don't forget me when you're rich and famous and stuff and they all seem to think that's your end goal but right. I don't think there's many other careers where it's like your end goal should be to be famous and you know no I like I told somebody recently I was I had this conversation with them and I said they were like, what's your like ultimate goal, your wildest dreams? And I said, you know, like when I first started, I did, it was like, oh, I want to be rich and famous. You know, mm. you're a kid, you say like stupid stuff like that, right? Every Now time it's, like <laughs> it's totally like, you know, I want to be successful doing what I love to do. I want, I want to reach people. I want to make them feel better about whatever's going on in their life, even if it's only for like two minutes yeah. <laughs> of yeah. one song. You know, and like, I think if a byproduct of reaching the most people I possibly can through my music is I make good money and people know who I am, then great. That's awesome. You know, yeah. but that's not, that's not the, that's not what fuels it. You know, it's mm -hmm. not like the thing. It's like, I'd be just as happy, you know, being able to play my music. Like if I, if I, never was discovered i would be super happy just being able to get on stage and play my music for people well into my like 80s yeah. <laughs> you know like like as long as i can do what i love to do i just love it so much and like connecting with people and yeah that's it yeah, as long as it's something that's making you happy yeah it's just success yeah. doesn't mean rich and famous success right is subjective isn't it it could be anything it's very um, subjective. Yeah. <laughs> Mine last year were like success for me. I want 1,000 subscribers. And it sounds ridiculous, but that was like the success I wanted. And I could have gone, I want to be YouTube famous and then given up right. a week later right. realizing that'd be really hard. So yeah, success is very subjective. Um, So if you could give people probably a little bit about your genre, your style, uh, if you could sell what your style is as an artist what what would you say <laughs> yeah it's that's a good question that's tricky too mm. um i it's funny because for a long time i didn't really know what it was you know i would i would write these songs and i would record them i'd spend money to record my music and we get to the end of it and i'd be like not a hundred percent happy with it i would still yeah. feel like it sounded fine i kind of would i call it like lowest common denominator recording which was like we'd be like oh well let's put a drum let's put drums and lead guitar and bass on the song because that's what a song has you know <laughs> there was no like thought to it or like what the sound is and um yeah that's 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 why there's such a huge gap you know, on um, what from what I was doing online, where now it's like I, I met a guy who is real pop savvy, like a pop savvy like producer. Yeah. And I I think like in my heart of hearts, I always wanted that. I wanted to be like kind of skew like in a pop direction. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm still like it. 
it's funny because a few years ago I asked like a manager in the business, like, what is my type of music? And they're like, oh, it's Americana. I was like, what's Americana? I think Americana is like the hot dog of like music <laughs> type of type of music. It's like if they can't really put you in like a direction, they'll kind of shove it all into Americana. Right. I guess. Yeah. Because I was always like, oh, it's like folk rock blues kind of. Yeah. But um, yeah, now it's it's definitely like it's it has real real it's like it's singer songwriter pop. You know, yeah. it's very it skews in like the Ed Sheeran direction, I think, and Harry Styles kind of <laughs> at, at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the right. Moment. Exactly. Like who knows where it's going to go, but it's, I'm happy with where it's at, you know? That's good. That's good. Um, I think it's always evolving, isn't it? You know, ask, ask again in five years time and you might have a different yeah. answer then. Um, That's true. So if you could give people a reason to listen to music, what reason would you give? I think that with my stuff, it's like authentic and real. There's no, I'm not fronting. I'm not like trying to be anything I'm not. And it's all true. Everything that's, it's like a musical diary, nice. you know? And I'm hoping that it's something that people can listen to and feel like, oh yeah, like I, I totally relate to this, you know, yeah. in some way. And if not, at least they can, they can say like, oh, like this is cool. Like, I like it. You know, it's got a good vibe. Yeah. Oh, nice. I, it, as long as they enjoy it, they're bopping along. You're happy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely want to, I definitely want to speak to people. I want to reach them, you know, yeah. like I want to like, I want people to feel like, oh, I want, I want them to want to like listen to the lyrics and sing along and be like, oh, this is cool. You know, yeah. I feel like it's hard, right? Because now music is so it, the the way that it is now it's so like it's all patterned and like very like computerized and like everything has yeah, to be formulaic. like a certain amount of time and yeah, yeah. it's so yeah, formulaic yeah. and so i think that it loses a little bit of like people stop listening to the lyrics you know like I know this is going to make me sound like an old man but like when i was a kid you know <laughs> we would like get like the lyrics would be like inside when you'd buy music, you you would have the lyrics. Oh yeah. You'd sit down like, on your bed, you'd listen to the yeah. music, you'd read the lyrics and you'd be sat there for 40 minutes start to finish, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And you'd listen to the whole thing and you'd be like, Oh wow. Like, and you'd kind of like, what are they talking about? You know? <laughs> like, mm. like, and I, I think, I think like that's, that's the kind of thing. Like I want people to, even if it's just one kid, sitting on their bed or like mulling over my lyrics i think that's cool you know yeah oh nice that's that's quite a nice thought to have uh, thinking of how others would would hear and experience your music and yeah in yeah. a world where everyone wants things that quickly and we've got two minute songs and um it can be hard the attention spans are getting worse which is actually leading me to my next question how do you feel the internet has impacted your approach to making music well that's the thing is like I think, I think my timing's off, you know, like, <laughs> I think maybe that I, I, I kind of wish I jumped on the internet music trend, like early on. Uh, but obviously, I was making a living being like, yeah. you know, cover guy. Um, now I feel like there's so much, it's hard to find, yeah. you know, to find, to find like your artists that you like, especially new artists. Like yeah. I, I got kind of lucky. I think what's happening is with my Spotify, at least, I think what's happening is that I'm playing a lot of shows in Vegas. So people are coming to my shows, you know, like thousands of people are coming. It's it's like going on tour, but I don't go anywhere. It's like people are coming <laughs> to me, you know? Like Elvis. So, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're seeing me perform, you know, uh, and I'm playing like four or five nights a week and then they're adding me and they're sharing my stuff with people. So I'm getting like kind of a really cool organic natural like push uh, yeah. where even like I have, you know, friends who are musicians in Vegas who are like, how are you? Why are your numbers so big? And or like and I'm like in the larger scheme of things, they're not like crazy enough big that like I'm going to you know, some record label is going to call me up and be like, Hey, yeah. we want to sign you because of your, you know, 
sixty thousand streams on this song or whatever. <laughs> but to me, it's like holy moly, like it's yeah, crazy. I look at that and that's impressive. And I think you've got a nice thing going where different people come in, they see you, and they'll listen to you. And they might look you up during the show or after, and um, yeah, that's quite nice and it's pretty cool. The more you can drip in your own stuff as well, the um, I think the better you're going to feel about uh, your own things as well, aren't you? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. And I, I've been trying to kind of like, I've been very quietly like doing this thing where I'm shifting it. So like, you know, eventually I want it to be like more original, less covers. <laughs> so I've been sort of like slowly like moving the original stuff in the covers like 50-50 you know, like I haven't gotten to fifty nice. percent yet, but I have. I have been trying to do it without being told off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's hard because sometimes we get in a groove and like people are throwing a bunch of money in, and I don't want to slow it down. I'm like, yeah. let's just do these songs that people are paying for. But it does seem like people really like the original music when they hear it. It's good. Um, and also, I started. You know, I I a couple years ago. I, I shot this, like, we tried to shoot a docu-series about, like, live music all across the country in America yeah. and, like, kind of music scenes and me chasing my dreams and, like, this whole thing. Um, and I got to be, I kind of, like, got to dip my toe into, like, all these different music scenes in all of these cities across the country. Oh, nice. And I felt really sad that Las Vegas didn't have a thriving original music scene so i came home and i started doing a weekly songwriter showcase yeah so we we were i'm trying to create like a music scene like a community here and um it's been good because i've had an opportunity to to see people reacting to my original music and i don't have to play cover songs you know mm -hmm. and then also i'm getting inspired because i get to see other artists creating and sharing their music too and nobody does it the same way they all put the music together like their own way it's really interesting so oh, it's, it's having, like a really good time with race it. isn't it with uh, music we're also different yeah. when it comes to it um but yeah i can i can kind of see i, I mean i know a bit about las vegas when I, I can kind of see why it wouldn't have its own independent scene compared to other places because it is very like tourists come don't they and they expect certain yeah. things and you had well the, you have the elvis people and whoever else and it's kind of very yeah. like week after week well, it's that it's isn't funny it? like i want to say like maybe like 10 years ago this thing happened in vegas which was like i think because edm is here hmm. and so like the dj thing like blew up like crazy in vegas like all the casinos basically were like well we used to have live music everywhere, but let's spend all of our money on like these crazy clubs <laughs> and these DJs, you know, because we want, we want to have like the best clubs in the world. And that's cool and everything, but like, it really did eat away at like live music yeah, because, yeah. Uh, you know, there's, they, they literally, they were like expanding casinos <laughs> and, Just and uh, <laughs> yeah, like, wow. and you know, and then like spending, you know, like oh like a million dollars to have like the chain smokers be like the resident djs at whatever club and stuff like that you know yeah, yeah. so that didn't help original music at all and mm -hmm. um and the other thing is like you know like they're when they spend their money they're looking for things that are familiar to the tourists and so they they're spending their money on like covers you know yeah. cover guys and then there's this there's this other weird thing that they do here which is if they do anything original they're pulling from other areas because they think like so they'll say like come and see nashville all-stars and they'll bring in they'll bring in original artists from nashville and pay them and put them up in a hotel and have these guys playing their original country music at like a bar but they won't but do original like, artists from Las Vegas then. No, I it's guess crazy. It I guess because you're there, it doesn't sound as maybe appealing. I don't know. Uh, I guess people are like, ooh, Nashville All-Stars? You know, yeah, like, it's, it sounds it's amazing. Crazy. Like Nashville, like, I don't know. It's weird. Uh, well, um, I think that's a good place to kind of end our chat here. Um, I hope that you break the mold. It's great that you're you. helping others to do independent music as well. 
and um, just talk to the other people on the screen now. Uh, I'm also doing a deep discography dive into Hal stuff. So uh, cool. I'll link that at the end of this video. So if you want to check out that deep discography dive, it'll be at the end of the video. Super. It was lovely meeting you. So thank you. Yeah, for the you great too, time. man. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, take care and have uh, a lovely few days. You've got shows coming up, haven't you? Um, enjoy. Yeah, those. we're we're on our way eight hours. We're driving eight hours to Reno <laughs> to play in Reno. Very nice. Well, good luck to you and take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, I say.